We're just going to do this song that everybody knows before the message, just a, a prayer. So why don't we just all stand up and just pray this before Pastor Babu comes up. Spirit of the living God, full of fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, and fall afresh on me. That is a cry of my heart. That is the desire of God to fill everyone with his presence this morning. Thank you, Rabbi, for amazing worship this morning. I'm so blessed. Thank you. I'm so excited to have Robin in the team. She is joining our worship team. She will lead worship in sport side by side with Libby. Are you excited about it? <laughs> it's going to be a glorious time. Thank you also for Melody and other existing members for your obedience and your sacrifices. And God will reward you richly and we are grateful for all that you do for Calvary. How are you this morning? Good. Uh, it's good to go back to the youth room, I think. Can we do that? Because <laughs> it seems full there. It seems pretty empty here. <laughs> anyway, just uh, praying that. I know when there is a process of God is moving more and more, God will add more members to the body of Christ this morning. And uh, guess what? We had uh, six kids for the weekend in our home. <laughs> six of them. We got Taylor Bonnie, Clinch, you know, the missionaries to Kenya. They went for the marriage retreat and they left their kids with us for this weekend. That was really fun. <laughs> it took almost like 20 minutes to put them in the car and lock them up. <laughs> and Chelsea said, would you desire for another four more kids? I said, no, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Two is good. <laughs> In India, we have a saying, you know, a long time ago, we are two, let's have only two. Now the saying in India, we are already two, let's have only one. <laughs> but in America, it's different. <laughs> anyway, so, well, that's not the topic of my story, have more. <laughs> I would love more spiritual children than my biological children. <laughs> more spiritual babies uh, in the kingdom of God. 
Well, uh, I know we are almost going to close the year in about a month or so. You know, we started with a beautiful spiritual theme for the whole church. It's all about God said, I will fill you with my spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. So I'm going to emphasize more on the spiritual gifts. Today I will kind of will cover up the, all the gifts, especially the last two gifts. And then uh, following weeks, we will look at more of the, the fruit of the Spirit. And then we kind of uh, finish uh, that theme for this year. You know, Sunday morning, we all come here to learn God's Word so that we are well equipped to live this Christian life productively, impactful, bringing change to others' life, shining the light of Christ Jesus. The Sunday morning is a sacred hour for God, for you. So you worship God and you learn from God and then we go out and imitate God everywhere in this world. So you need to know this wonderful truth that in the New Testament church, God is calling every Christian a priest. I want you to say aloud with me, I am a priest of God. So the priesthood of all believers are granted in the New Testament church. So one of the major work of the church is to equip the saints for the good work, to carry the work of the gospel into the world. So when we come together, we are served and also we are equipped to serve the church, the kingdom of God. So this is what's happening Sunday mornings when we come together here. That's why the New Testament, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, empower the church to become the priesthood before God. So you are a priesthood. We learned already that the same Spirit, and He gives different gifts. Same Spirit gives us different gifts for common good to edify each other. So when we are coming together, God is giving us gifts to have a common good and also edify each other. So you are called to serve Christ and the church according to the spiritual gifts and the abilities you have received from the Lord. Amen. None of us could say, no, I don't have any gifts. You got at least one gift. Praise God. At least you have a gift of presence. You are seated in the seats. Amen. Amen. <laughs> I tell you, you got some gift this morning already in the house of God. You can exchange, you can give, you can share that gift with one another. Nobody is without gift. Everyone got at least one gift, right? So therefore, that you can put that gift in practice, sharing with others. Sharing with others. God has given you your gift. I want you to spend little time throughout this year to discover your gifts. What's my gift? What is my high gifts and low gifts, you know? You can score and then focus more on the giftings. Then you can actually become a powerful witness for Christ. Lots of people put those gifts under the uh, table, right? Under the table. I want you to pick them up now, put them on the table. See what the Lord has given to you. How can you become effective for the kingdom of God? How you can, you know, even enjoy yourself. Gifts are given for your benefit. Gifts also given for the benefit of others. So it is kind of serving both purposes. Those gifts are amazing. Praise God. I have a gift of prophecy. Whether you believe it or not, you have seen it, right? Sometimes. If I really focus on the gift of prophecy, what happens? I am encouraged more than I encourage people. I have seen that, right? When I'm discouraged, I hear God speak to me. When I hear that prophetic voice in my ears, I am so encouraged, boosted up, fired up. I say, Lord, I'm, I'm ready for the new beginning. I'm ready for the future. I'm ready for the challenge. I'm ready for the crisis. It's going on and on. So your gifts are given to, from God for your own benefits. The benefit of others. With that understanding, I want you to turn your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses from 4 to 11. If you are there, say amen. Okay, if you see there, say amen. <laughs> okay, already. Let's do it. 
the scripture says, there are different kinds of gifts, but the same spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them, and every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. The one there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom, to another a message of knowledge, by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between spirits. To another, speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another, the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of the one and the same Spirit. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and He distributes them to each one just as He de desires. The one Spirit, different gifts, and God determines to give His gifts to each one. Amen? Each one. God has called you with many other purposes, different varieties of ministries. So he knows how you can be productive according to that. According to his will and purpose, he gives you, distributes his gifts to you and to me. So this morning, I'm going to talk about the last two gifts. Of course, I spent most time the beginning, at the beginning of this year talked about tongues, but I'm going to touch many facts about the tongues and then a little bit about interpretation because... The tongues, speaking in tongues, interpretation go hand in hand. It's almost like a similar gifts. So without the interpretation, tongues cannot operate. You know, tongues cannot operate. Interpretation has no value if there is no tongues. So these two gifts are combined together. So that's the, 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 the gifts that we are going to learn about today. The, the tongues and the interpretation of the tongue. At this moment, I'm going to make you to watch a video. It's about seven minutes, a long video, but there is science behind speaking in tongues. After this video, I'm going to come and talk about more about tongues today, and uh, let's learn together something about the spiritual language God has given to the church. Thanks for watching our internet edition of Nightline. I'm Martin Bashir. Today we examine the Christian practice of speaking in tongues. Those outside the church often say it's nothing more than gibberish, but some Christians claim that it's the purest form of prayer, beyond the constraints of normal language. Nightline's Vicky Mabry reports on the science of speaking in tongues. <laughs> It is an ancient practice mentioned in the Bible. St. Paul called it speaking in the tongues of angels. Jesus' apostles were first said to do it at Pentecost. The technical term is glossolalia. Most people call it speaking in tongues. There's a vast number of people out there that because they did not personally experience it or have been taught against it all their lives, there's no way they have an ability to embrace it. So that's common. We're still mocked and made fun of. That's not stopping Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus or others in his congregation at the Freedom Valley Worship Center in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, from using what they say is a God-given gift. It's almost as if I'm able to tap into God's heart and what he wants. I get goosebumps, actually. You can feel him all around you, and you can feel him speaking through the words that you're saying. It almost sounds like a foreign language, but actually, those who speak in tongues are not saying anything in any known language. With the gift of tongues, I can trust the Holy Spirit to figure out what needs to be healed. He will use what sounds like gibberish, like any other language sounds like gibberish. Uh, he, he will interpret that for his purposes and his uses. We say things in our own English language, but speaking in tongues is a heavenly language that we're going to God 
and Jesus intercedes for us. They say they have no control over what comes out of their mouths, that they're swept up in a rush of ecstatic religious feeling, and that the Holy Spirit is speaking through them. Do you hear yourself? Oh, yeah. Sometimes I think I sound like a total idiot. It's almost all in yellows and red here. At the University of Pennsylvania, Dr. Andrew Newberg is looking for an explanation for what most regard as unexplainable. I mean, it's not language. It's not regular language, at least, that would normally activate the frontal lobe. Newberg is exploring the relationship between faith and science, studying what happens in the brain during the deepest moments of faith. If we're really going to look at this very, very powerful force in human history, of religion and spirituality, I think we really have to take a look at how that affects our brain, what's changing or turning on or turning off in our brain. We're going to go around very fast right now. He's recently published a study of Americans speaking in tongues. Remarkably, he discovered that what's happening to them neurologically looks a lot like what they say is happening to them spiritually. Let's make sure we got your whole head in there. We asked Pastor Jerry Stoltzfus to come to the university to have his brain scanned while he speaks in tongues. This way, we could see the experiment in action. I don't think faith is anything to be afraid of from science. Science validates faith, so bring it on. Whatever the facts are, bring it on. Just go ahead and, and you can begin prayer. And... First, he's told to pray in English. Father, I pray for each of the family members involved in this study. Grant them what they are looking for in their personal lives for their vision and their potential. Then he's told to speak in tongues. This is the first scan when he was in prayer, speaking in English. This is the second scan when he is praying in tongues. Pastor Stoltzfus's scan showed that his frontal lobe, the part of the brain that controls language, was active when he prayed in English, but for the most part, it fell quiet when he prayed in tongues. When they're actually engaged in this whole a very intense spiritual practice, religious practice for them, their frontal lobes tend to go down in activity, but I think it's very consistent with the kind of experience that they have because they say that they're not in charge. They're, it's the voice of God, it's the spirit of God that's moving through them. Dr. Newberg says the results were even more dramatic on subjects who were scanned without a nightline crew in the room and who were not speaking in tongues on demand as Jerry Stoltzfus had done. Study participants like Donna Morgan first listened to music, then went to where the spirit took them. <laughs> When I heard about the study, I already knew within my spirit that it was going to be proven that there's a part of our brain that we have no control, that when the Holy Ghost is interceding for us, we're out of control. In earlier studies, Dr. Newberg looked at what happens in the brains of Buddhist monks meditating and Franciscan nuns praying. And it was noticeably different from what happens to tongue speakers. That's in fairly stark contrast to the people who are like the Buddhists and the Franciscan nuns who are in prayer because they're very intensely focused. And in those individuals, the frontal lobes actually increased activity. But Dr. Newberg isn't out to prove or disprove anything. He can tell you what happens in the brain, not why. Were you skeptical going into the studies? If by skeptical, the question is, is this a real phenomenon, meaning that this is truly the voice of God speaking through them, that's a much more problematic question, I think, and something that I'm not sure that we've specifically answered simply by doing our study. But for those who believe, it doesn't matter if science can find the footprints of the Holy Spirit in their 21st century brain scans. When you've experienced this, you don't really care what anybody else thinks. It's personal for, in the first place. It is something between you and God. So we don't really care if it's validated or not, but it's fascinating when it is so that people that have 
thought we're crazy can have something to look at to say maybe we're not we're still crazy we're just not as crazy as they thought thank, thank you so you. much this is vicki mabry for nightline in philadelphia that's uh, one of the great uh, videos out there to watch and learn that what is happening when we speak in tongues and it is not normal and your brain function is not just normal as when you speak in languages, your brain activates. But when you speak in tongues, it is supernatural. The brain is absent. <laughs> amazing. Amazing. To learn a little bit about the science behind those who speak in tongues, it proves that it is a supernatural gift. Amen? And nothing to do with the nature nothing to do with the nature. So after all, today we will talk about the gifts of the tongues and interpretation of tongues. It's been a tough subject throughout the church history. You know it, different denominations. Uh, some agreed, some disapproved, and some organizations have rejected speaking in tongues absolutely from their congregations. Some have concluded that all the spiritual gifts are ceased and not necessary anymore. There are some dry Christians out there, they feel that the spiritual gifts are, we don't need to pray for healing, we don't need to pray for miracles, we don't need to, you know, just believe God, that's it, go on. And some are opposed to the gift of tongues. And uh, we, a lot of Christians also become prejudiced against other Christians, those who experience what the Bible has prescribed for Christian living in a way that we will be empowered to do much more work for the kingdom of God. But our church embraces all the spiritual gifts. If you agree, say amen. amen. <laughs> so we agree and we practice, we embrace all the spiritual gifts that God has given for our journey. If you really look at God's word, if something is not necessary, something is not important, God would not let his end writing, right? If something is recorded in the scripture, God knows it that will be useful for us to believe in, us to practice, us to you know, engage, to you know, grow more and more and more. Today I will take you to a couple more steps to understand even a little better. Probably this could be a reminder for all of us. We live in the dispensation of the Holy Spirit and the church. Therefore, all the gifts are active till the rapture to build up the body of Christ. So till the rapture happens, all these gifts are going to be active in the church. God is not stopping any of the gifts that he has shared with the yearly church to the modern church. He is giving all these gifts to us. So we are going to look something uh, deeper about the tongues. You know, the tongue, the word, comes from a Greek word called glossolalia. That means speaking in unknown languages which you do not know. Speaking in an unknown language that you do not know before. You never learned about it. It is a new language, but all by the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, you start speaking. That is the first kind of a tongues God has given to the first church. Not only that, the same words, meaning also a spiritual language that is in a heavenly language that God gives to each person. So you don't need to imitate tongues the way I speak tongues, the same syllables, or maybe you feel like it's a gibberish. A lot of people, those who under, don't understand, it's like a gibberish, right? It's like, what are you talking about? What is this crazy? But they do not know, but you know, you're speaking in tongues to edify yourself. So you speak in unknown languages, which you do not know, and also spiritual language. There are heavenly languages. So there are three types of tongues I'm going to talk about this morning. Number one, speaking in unknown human languages to spread the gospel. Speaking in unknown human languages. These are human languages, but you never learned about them. You did not know about them. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, God makes you to speak to spread the gospel. This is what happened at the Pentecost when people gathered together at the Pentecost for the festival. People, the 120 people were upper room. 
the Holy Spirit came upon them and he enabled them to speak in different languages. Hallelujah. There are 17 languages that are recorded in the book of Acts that they spoke it clear, speaking the mystery of God. Those who came from all these countries were like, ah, looking at how come this uncivilized people, the low caste in the society, a fisherman community, speaking all these wonderful languages, describing the mystery of God. Amen. So these people are not scholarly. You need to know that, right? The 120 people who gathered together on the upper room were not scholars. They're not philosophers. Uh, they are not coming from a high class families. They were just simple people, depended on fishing day after day, right? Not everybody highly skilled, you know, have all kinds of knowledge and intellectual capacity to speak in those languages. They were ordinary people just like you and me. When the Spirit of God came upon them, they were speaking the mystery of God in the languages which they do not know. Wow. That's why it says it's a supernatural gift that God gives to his children to propagate the gospel, to spread the gospel message. That means we just become instruments for God to use us. How many would say, Lord, I want to be that kind of instrument. That you will use me to spread the message of the gospel to others. How many say yes to the Lord? Amen. Amen. Yes for anything. Whatever God wants us to do through us for his glory, we will say yes to that. We will say yes to that. We will say yes to that. And these gifts are still functional. In many countries, like I have seen this predominantly happen with a, with a missionary journey. When you go, to a, go as a missionary to different countries, different continents, where you have not expertise, the knowledge or wisdom of the language, you are still there in the middle of the service, maybe walking on the roadside, right? You don't know how to communicate with them. All of a sudden, you start praying, and your prayer language becomes the local language there. It happened to many, 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 many. There are too many witnesses about that. How God can use us to connect with one another, proclaiming the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. This was the first type of tongue that we see in the Bible that you speak in unknown languages. How about this morning, right? You get up and speaking in Tamil there, my language. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? You speak up and speaking some kind of African languages. Whoa. I say, how this white person is talking my language? <laughs> like, you know, if you have learned it, that's fine. It will put me in a big surprise. And I say, oh, definitely God is among them. Same situation is happening on the day of Pentecost that these you know, low-class people, according to their society, at the time, speaking in these wonderful languages. Some languages are only for the higher class, you know. <laughs> you know, Greek and Hebrews. Not everybody can speak those languages easily. You really need to learn. And God is using them in a, such a way to attract, grab the attention of people. That's a supernatural gift of Tongues. That's the first kind of tongue. Secondly, speaking in tongues to bring a prophetic message and spiritual edification in the church. This is the second type of tongues that is given to the church that we read in 1 Corinthians 14, 26 to 28. What then shall we say, brothers and sisters, when you come together, each of you as a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue or an interpretation? Everything must be done so that the church may be built up. If anyone speaks in a tongue, two or at the most three should speak one at a time and someone must interpret. If there is no interpreter, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and to God. Well, this is another type of a tongue, right? There are two kinds of tongues. I want you to know that. The number one was the human language, but you do not know, but God enables you to speak in. This is another type of tongue. This is a spiritual language. Sometimes it sounds like a gibberish for many people who have no experiences. 
But I have been with pastors who start speaking, praying in tongues. I feel the power and presence of God. Amen. I don't question it. Because I am used to speaking in tongues. When somebody taps into the spirit and praying in tongues, all of a sudden there is a supernatural power is released around your context. Released around where you are there. You feel already God's spirit and you join together and praying more and more to tap into the kingdom of God. Tap into the grace of God. Tap into whatever God is about to do or comfort you, or console you, encourage you. You know, it's an amazing moment when we come together speaking tongues and encouraging one another. In this context, those who speak in tongues in the church, the Bible says, when the tongue is loud and clear enough for everybody, some people speak it quietly for themselves, sometimes the tongue is given for the whole church. In that regard, the Bible says we must have an interpreter in the church because the, you know, the church is not uh, uh, disorderly or a chaotic. Rather, we have somebody who is gifted with the interpretation that someone speaks a loud tongue and the next person who has a gift of interpretation must interpret so that people who come to church for the very first time, those who are not exposed to the Christian life, Christian beliefs, Give that the Holy Spirit will not doubt us, will not question us. Rather, they will be edified through the interpretation, knowing that God is among them. Hallelujah. In Bible says, and those believers who come here will be convicted, will seek forgiveness from God, and they will appreciate God's grace and presence which resides in the church. And the Bible says, when you come together, if it is a loud enough tongue, probably three people we can let in the church to speak in loud and clear. And then those who have a gift, they can interpret above the tongue. And then we can little go further. If there is no inter interpreter in the church, Bible also tells us that the same person who spoke in the tongues can interpret the tongue. Praise the Lord. That's amazing. I love that fact because the Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 13, For this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. Praise the Lord. Even if you do not have an interpreter in the church who has a special gift, but now the another you know, grace is this, that those who spoke tongues loud enough, clear enough, that person can pray to God, God can give the interpretation. Wow, that's amazing. So you speak in tongues, no interpretation is done from the other person. You speak to God, God give me interpretation. Or you already have a gift of interpretation after you spoke in tongues, clear and give the interpretation. Amen? Of the tongue. So that is supposed to be happening in the church arena. Hallelujah. Are you clear at this point? Do you understand? I hope it's getting clearer. How we use these gifts uh, orderly to bring glory and honor to God. And three, the third type of tongue in the scripture, when you speak in tongues, you are speaking for your personal edification. Praise the Lord. Personal edification. And when you speak in tongues for your personal edification, Bible says, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 4, anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves. So when you speak in tongues, you are edifying yourself. Edifying yourself, encouraging yourself, making your faith strong in the Lord. And we let's go a little further. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2 says, For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people, but to God, right? If somebody is standing next to you, they start praising God in tongues, praying God, to, praying to God in tongues, don't get disturbed. They are not doing for you, they are doing for themselves. Amen? A lot of people, right? I said, okay, we worship God in the church sitting very quietly. Yes, I understand all of that. But somebody who speaks in tongues and prays in tongues, but not disturbing the next person, somebody else, but they're doing, doing very, very good, good, good volume by, for themselves to hear and praise the Lord. Let them do it. Hallelujah. Let them worship God that way. 
Because God accepts all expression of worship if it is done with the truth and spirit. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. God accepts all kinds of all expression of worship if it is done with the truth and the spirit. Seeking God with the holiness, the heart of holiness. If that is done, that is acceptable before God. Amen. That's amazing. There's not one form of worship. There are so many forms of worship, expressions of worship. But all needs to be attained through truth, through the spirit, through the holiness. When we do it, God accepts it. Hallelujah. When you come together, speak in English language, worship God, God accepts it. When I come here as an Indian, speak in Indian language and worshiping God, God accepts it. Hallelujah. Somebody comes and speak in tongues and worshiping God, God accepting it. But all are done with a clear conscience by seeking God with the truth and spirit and holiness. God accepts it. Otherwise, God could have stopped it. He said, it is all about liturgy. <laughs> right? God could have stopped right there, right? It's all about Old Testament form of worship, right? Jesus interrupted the Old Testament worship, by the way. <laughs> he went into synagogues and temples, right? He interrupted them because he just like a, you know, gong, like the symbols of gong, it's sounding, there's no meaning. It's sounding, but there's no meaning, right? He got mad with the Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes, and high priests. He was not happy with them. He was not absolutely happy with them, Right? You know what? He's preaching God's word apart from the John the Baptist by the river Jordan, right? The scribes were coming to attack him because they're supposed to be preaching God's word. Bible says God's word will be sought from the mouth of the priest. Old Testament is so clear. Bible says the Old Testament priests are not a simple job. God said your mouth need to be filled with my word because people seeking wisdom, knowledge from your mouth. But when he said Jesus' time, these priests were not preaching. The Levites were not preaching. High priests were not preaching. Teaching God's word. They, they followed certain rules and regulations and traditions. Left God's word alone. It was John the Baptist. Amen. Warning people. Calling them for repentance. Calling them come back to God to seek him with the truth and spirit. Truth and spirit. So God accepts all expression of worship. To praise God. Honor God. Worship God. Amen. Amen. Therefore do not limit yourself. Amen. You can worship God in any setups. If that worship is honoring God. Amen. Any part of settings. God loves all of us. Already, the third uh, part of tongue gift is that to edify yourself. Praise God. We come to church this morning to edify ourselves. To seek the Lord. Love the Lord with all our hearts. This also includes praying in tongues, praising in tongues, interceding in tongues. It goes on and on and on and on and on. On and on and on and on. So this is a third type of tongues. Just to edify your so when we come together, everybody speaking tongues, what we do, we do harmoniously. We do harmoniously, not just screaming at the top of the voice. Rather, we do it so harmoniously. Praise the Lord. Very beautifully, enjoyably, right? Uh, th that kind of thing God wants us to do. Exercise love to one another with regard to the spiritual gifts, right? Uh, do not look down upon people, those who use some spiritual gifts. You may not understand, but there is more in the kingdom of God. Say with me, there is more in the kingdom of God. If you want more of God, God will give you more of him every time. Some people said, oh, this is enough, Lord. This is good. That's good for me. That is good too. I understand that. But if you really seek God more, you receive more, more. More because he's a never ending source. God is never ending source. God is never ending joy. God is never ending, you know, a peace. God is never ending love. He has more to give you. If you seek him more, 
you receive more, right? You can have more of him. He said, all of me, more of me, more of him. We can have more of God in our lives, every day of our lives. So uh, I want you to have a, this balanced understanding that not condemning somebody who uses all these gifts are judgmental. So let's, let's not be judgmental. Come on, hallelujah. Because all these gifts need to be operated within the church so that the church will flourish. Church will become a great light around the world, right? God wants us to be the powerhouse, powerful Christian, living a, such a victorious life. As I mentioned that, without interpretation, tongue has no value. Therefore, these two gifts go together. I, you know, dig deeper to learn more about interpretation. There's much, not much written anywhere. All the dictionaries, all the commentaries, all kinds of historical books. I searched this whole week to learn, is there anything more about interpretation? A simple gift God gives you, you know, to interpret about the spiritual language, what they have spoken. This is spiritual language. Which what we speak in tongues. So that person is given that divine ability just to interpret just like that. Praise the Lord. They know that language. They give the exact explanation of the language so that people are challenged, people are corrected, people are rebuked, people are encouraged, people are healed, people are called to repentance, people are, you know, will get the direction for the life. God operates in all these gifts. For us, how many of you desire the speaking in tongues? No, only three hands after preaching like this. Come on, <laughs> I desire because the Bible says, eagerly desire spiritual gifts. Eagerly, <laughs> 1 Corinthians 14 39. Therefore, my brothers and sisters. Be eager to prophesy. This is not, see, I want you to understand the context that he is not writing to pastors, okay? He is not writing to evangelists. He is not just writing to apostles. He is not just writing to shepherds of the church. And these books are written to a common believers in different churches in the, in the Eastern Europe. It's in a Corinth, Corinth right? He is writing to the Corinthian church believers. The church believers like you and me, he's not just like writing to me, he's a pastor, anointed, called, appointed, and all of that. He's writing to the common folks. This is a context, and he's telling to us, my brothers, my sisters, be eager to prophesy. Do not forbid speaking in tongues. That means there's a, some tensions there. Some people say, oh, it's not necessary, stop it, quit it, shut up, you know, all those languages. That happens in, in our church too. Somebody don't like it. I have exposed to some leaders, some didn't like it. Some say, why that person all the time, right? Why that person all the time? I heard all kinds of command, command, commands. Pastor, you got to stop them. I said, okay. Why would you not come and interpret it? Amen. <laughs> I said, <laughs> That happened recently, some, some time ago. Why that person speaks the tongue all the time? I said, why would you not pray to God, give you interpretation? Come on to the church. You interpret so that it gets better than judging one person. Wow. It's getting hard, right? That's Pastor Babu for you. If I ever I'm gone from your church, you can remember me. That guy was hard on from this pulpit. <laughs> Part of me is too hard. <laughs> Tell you the truth as it is. <laughs> uh, Bible says, do not forbid speaking in tongues. Let them speak. Amen. We need to also embrace the gift to speak in tongues. To seek the Lord. Thirdly, ask God to give you a gift of interpretation. Praise the Lord. That's a good thing in the church. We have a balanced people like have all the gifts. Somebody speaks in some, some interprets. It will be harmonious and beautiful thing. 
beautiful thing. That, will, that should be the culture of a church. Amen? Exercising all the gifts together. So that the church is well equipped, edified to do the work of the kingdom of God. I don't think so. I don't have any more notes for today. I'm done. <laughs> I don't know. I, haven't, I don't have any much more interpretation right now. I said it as it is. The rest of the time, what we are going to do today, we're going to stand up on our feet in a few minutes. We're going to ask God, God, unleash all the spiritual gifts upon me. Amen? Give me, Father. God may not give you all the gifts to everybody, but you'll get at least one, right? At least two, at least three, at least four. You desire gifts of the Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, give me the gift of healing. Hallelujah. Performing miracles. Uh, healing. Give me that gift. And I want you to ask God and all these wonderful gifts that are written in 1 Corinthians. Because these gifts are very critical for ministry. Amen. For ministry, for the church, these gifts are so critical. So critical. Because these are supernatural. You will not get it in a university or any seminaries. You won't get it. Even the seminaries even don't teach about these things. No seminary. They only talk about theology, theology, theology. They do that. A lot of seminaries won't even say what would be, what to be, how it would be being a pastor day by day, meeting the needs of a congregation. No seminary does that. Right? It is at the school of the Holy Spirit, you will be taught to live a victorious Christian life. How about that? I'm a theologian. I studied theology long years, still doing my doctorate. I tell you, no theology, no school is teaching all these things. You will be educated properly about your, fee, about your life at the feet of the Holy Spirit, at the school of the Holy Spirit. That means you need to take your Bible. Amen. This is the university, right? And your knees are your benches, right? <laughs> and you talk to the Lord and tell God, I need you. Help me. I want to learn all those things. And I want to be a, such a powerful, victorious, productive Christian, living and imitating Christ, Christ alone. And this morning, as we all stand up, we are going to ask God, God, give me the gift of wisdom. God, give me the gift of knowledge. God, give me the gift of faith. God, give me the gift of healing. God, give me the gift of miraculous powers. God, give me the gift of prophecy. God, give me the gift of distinguishing between spirit and discernment. God, give me in speaking in uh, many kinds of tongues. God, give me the gift of interpretation. Come on, that's our prayer. Can we stand up? Let's worship team come up here. Hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. And we want to be an active church, a powerful church. Oh, we want to be the church that you planted the first century throughout the history. We want to be the church of your dream, your desire. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. It's your time to ask God. It's your time to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. It is your time to operate all the gifts He has given to you, each according to His determination. It is your time to operate. Come on, hallelujah. Shallow Christian living is enough. Powerless Christian living is enough. God is calling us in to tap into more of His Spirit. More of His Spirit. Oh, more of His Spirit. God, I desire more of Your Spirit. I desire the magnificent manifestation of Your Spirit upon Calvary. I am desiring that we will move from glory to glory. Exposing the world to the power of God. Hallelujah. Sing with the spirit of the living God. Fall afresh on us. With one voice, with one faith, with one pulse and hunger. Hallelujah. Thank you.
of the Holy Spirit. One baptism, many fillings of the Holy Spirit. Fill me today, Lord, with all those spiritual gifts. Use me as a powerful instrument. Let me be the carrier of your presence. Every day, Jesus, bless this obedient congregation fulfill our desire so that we can be the dream church that you are dreaming about. You can be your kingdom that you are dreaming about to operate from Calvary, oh Father. Not only that, Father, help us not to shy off, to use our gifts that you already given to us. Help us to use them in our homes, in our workplaces, among families, friends, Everywhere we go, help us to operate those gifts so that we can assure people into your kingdom, Lord. God, even as we go from this place, and I pray that you'll walk with your people, dwell among them, shine your light around them, Father. Give them victory over every battle that you'll face this week. Open up the doors that people are waiting and knocking on them. Help us to dwell under your peace today, Lord, and forever. Send us with your heavenly blessings. Now, children of the Most High God, I commit into the hand of our Father. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his face and give you peace. Now, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Go with peace and serve the Lord. Give the Lord a shout of praise.